Okay, YouTube's only given me 10 minutes, so let's get down to it. I'm going to be dealing here with three claims, often, uh, or accusations, often levelled at the Bible, and I'll be dealing with them in three separate videos. The first is uh, that the Bible is full, literally full, of contradictions. The second is that the Bible is historically inaccurate, and uh, the third is that the Gospel writers are uh, guilty of spin. That is, they take the historical person of Jesus and they add a little spice, magic dust, something like that. Now, I want to say two or three things before I get down to the nitty-gritty of this. The first is uh, that in no way in this video or series of videos am I going to prove to you that the Bible is the Word of God. In no way am I going to prove that. Um, all I want to do here is demonstrate to you that the Bible is trustworthy. Of course, trustworthiness is something you would expect of something that claims to be inspired by the God of truth. The second point I want to make is that it's important to realise when you come to look at the Bible, you're not just dealing with one book. You're actually dealing with a collection of books, a library. Uh, Professor F. F. Bruce, the theologian, uh, wrote this. He says, The writings themselves belong to a great variety of literary types. History, law, civil, criminal, ethical, rural and sanitary. Religious poetry, didactic treaties, lyric poetry, parable and allegory, biography, personal correspondence, personal memoirs and diaries, in addition to the distinctively biblical types of prophecy and apocalyptic. There's a lot there, as you can see. Well, why bring this up? Well, Christians often speak of the Bible as being true, and sometimes we unthinkingly qualify that with the word literally. We say it's literally true. The problem is, while you might consider something like poetry or hyperbole, for example, as conveying truth, you'd be wrong to consider it as literally true. If you do, you will end up in all sorts of problems and conundrums. For example, if I took um, uh, Song of Songs, chapter 4, verse 1, and quoted this to you, uh, and said, Your eyes behind your veil are like doves. Your hair is like a flock of goats descending from Mount Gilead. Now, if you took me as literally, uh, speaking literally there, you might slap me in the face. What are you saying? My hair is like a flock of goats descending from Mount Gilead. That's insulting. But when you realise it's poetry, and the writer is addressing his lover, then it uh, changes the whole complexion of the passage. So, when you interpret the Bible and you measure it against the criteria of, criteria of truth, which we should, we need to be aware what, of what genre of literature we are reading. If we're not, we might end up dismissing what we're reading as rubbish for all the wrong reasons. So that's the second point I want to make. The third point that I want to make is that just because a particular author in the Bible writes something or states something does not mean that God is in complete agreement with it. For example, the psalmist David writes, Happy is he who repays you for what you've done, he who seizes your infants and dashes them against the rocks. Is David expressing God's heart at this point? Absolutely not. Uh, he's expressing his own. You see, the Psalms are a collection of poetry written in the most by King David himself. And in them you will find every conceivable human and thus fallible mood uh, portrayed. Anger, grief, love, hate, angst, despair, joy, every conceivable human emotion. The Psalms reveal the truth about the complexity of human nature and sometimes the darkness of human nature. 